Bitcoin dropped by almost 3% last night. And while we have recovered a little bit today, we are still coming up against resistance. In today's video, guys, we are going to be taking a look at the technical analysis on Bitcoin, sharing my thoughts and opinions on where I think BTC is heading. Let's roll that intro and get right down into it. Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another Bitcoin video update. Here we have Bitcoin paired up with USDT. We are using the one hour Binance chart for this analysis here. Now, as you can kind of see, we did see another move to the downside. We didn't breach the current swing low. That was 45,000. Uh, sorry, forty-one thousand five hundred dollars, um, and we did get very close to this though. So as you can kind of see just here, we actually moved down to forty-one thousand seven hundred and twenty dollars. Now, since we had this move to the downside, we have seen a little bit of a rally back to the upside, where we still continue to find resistance on that fifty SMA. That is forty-two thousand seven hundred and forty-seven dollars. The fifty EMA is sat just above at the red line, and that is. 42,945 with a 200 EMA at 44,079. So we know that from our EMA points of view here, things are not necessarily looking as strong as they may be needed to do. And we can see that we are getting rejected at the moment on that 50 SMA. Now, if we want to see price action rallying back up, obviously we're going to have to tackle the 50 SMA, 50 EMA. We want to be looking for closures above these levels in order to fuel us with a move to the upside. There's a couple of different ways that this can be playing because I can see Elliott Wave Theory showing us the idea of a three wave move up towards the 200 EMA. Um, at least if that is the case, then we will potentially see a little bit more of a run uh, to the upside before we actually start to move on down. OK, so this scenario is only going to be valid if we... Uh, do not cross down lower than the $41,500, right? And so I'm just going to mark that up there so you can approximately see uh, we'll be looking for a three-wave pattern up to this little area, right, which will coincide with our 200 hourly EMA. So that's going to be the case for the bulls. They're going to be looking to break above and close above that 50 SMA, 50 EMA, but most likely our trend filter, to the 200 hourly EMA is likely to be resistance and we'll get rejected from there. And the reason for this is that we are, at least in my opinion, either coming out of a wave four or still in a wave four position, uh, which means we have a wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, and we will have a final fifth wave move to the downside. Okay, so we're looking for this wave four to either be complete, if it is complete, when we kind of truncated, well, fell short of what we would normally expect it to do, um, or we're going to basically just move on down. So that's kind of where that sits. Now on our little chart just here, uh, we can see a bit of an impulsive breakdown here as well. So we know that this here is already kind of completed a five wave structure. And what's really interesting about that is the way that this could potentially be meaning that we are heading more towards um, a bigger corrective or, or a bigger kind of five wave pattern to finish off our fifth wave structure, right? So if we're tracking that fifth wave, it's going to be a five wave move that we're looking for. So the internal workings of these candles could potentially line up nicely with that fifth wave movement. So until we kind of get confirmation by breaking down lower than 41,500, it's going to be one of those to keep a close eye on. Ultimately, though, uh, we will be looking for moves higher than 43,257 in order to confirm we're still in the wave four position. Okay, so the case for the bulls and the case for the bears, they kind of know the target ranges of what they're looking for. Now, throw some smart money concepts into the mix here, and you can see that there's a lot of, um, well, I say a lot of, but there's some fair value gaps slightly higher in the price chart and equilibrium. I think these are something that we'll go after, but just not right away. Uh, like I said, the patterns here and the structures here are giving us an indication that we are likely to see a bit more to the downside. Now, we obviously have also got a bearish structure with this change of characterization on Smart Money Concepts as well. So Smart Money Concepts is telling us that we are bearish. Elliott Wave Theory is telling us that we are bearish. The 50 EMA, the 50 SMA, the 200 EMA are telling us that we're bearish. There's very little hope on the one hour chart at this point in time. We could, of course, also take a look at the stochastic. The stochastic on the uh, stochastic RSI on the hourly chart is also in an overbought area and also is giving us the indication that things are bearish. Uh, as we can kind of see here, we've got the white line and the yellow line. 
And we are seeing a little bit of a cross here. So we will be starting to see a bit of a move to the downside in the coming hours, in my opinion. And the four hour chart is in a very similar position. Take the stochastics off and throw in our divergence indicator. Uh, this is basically showing us whether or not there's a divergence between the RSI and the price action. And there is not. So there's nothing to worry about there. Let's go ahead and um, go ahead and take that off and throw the volumes in. Volumes here as prices push back up have decreased, shows us weakness. Uh, so for the most part, yeah, I'm expecting a little bit more to the downside here for BTC. Now, once we complete this move to the downside, I am looking for us to retest around $45,500. This is going to be taking out those fair value gaps, also testing out equilibrium, and is something that I think is very much needed in the space. Let's go ahead and roll this up into our daily chart. Now, for our daily chart, we have gone ahead and closed yesterday below the 50 EMA and the 50 SMA. This is the first time in Bitcoin's uh, most recent history that we've closed below here. And so we're talking about October 2023 since we were last below the 50 SMA, uh, sorry, the 50 EMA, the red line. And we were uh, talking September the last time that we were below the 50 SMA. So right now we are basically testing out some of those existing lows. And as you can kind of see here, yes, it is still a higher low, um, but a very much an impulsive breakdown. It's much easier to see this impulsive breakdown on our daily time frame right in here. Okay, once we lose this and we have a new bearish lower low, we will bounce to the upside in my opinion, mainly because people will look at that as a way to short the market, but the shorting would happen more around $45,000 in my humble opinion. Um, so for the most part, everything here is still moving along quite nicely and as per our expectations. We are going for that bounce upwards, okay? So we will be lifting the RSI back to the overbought area when we retest $45,000. Um, but otherwise, uh, we're still on track for the testing of the $40,000 level. And of course, moving down to the 35, 37, and of course, losing that and going to 30 to 33. Um, so everything on our daily chart is kind of aligning quite nicely with a nice healthy correction to the downside, uh, where we can start to kind of really take advantage of some cheaper altcoins and some cheaper Bitcoin if we wanted to. Now, if I throw in the VPVR, um, what's really interesting about the VPVR is it shows you where the most of the volume is. Now, let's go ahead and just adjust this out a little bit because it does need to adjust. And this is what's really interesting. So down here at this low range is where the majority investors were accumulating Bitcoin. OK, that was basically between twenty eight and thirty one thousand dollars. There is a high probability, knowing that this is the range that retail investors and in basically just people were accumulating Bitcoin, that this is the range that Bitcoin is likely to go back down to. That's not to say that there wasn't a little bit of uh, FOMO up here in this high range. There was, and you can see it there. Um, but as you can see, there's really insufficient amounts of volume at these other areas. Obviously, we've highlighted a couple of key areas, the 200 year may be in one, of course, and of course, that $35,000, $37,000 range is another. But the majority of the accumulation and the volume was down here at $28,000 to $32,000. Why is this important? Well, knowing this, and we're not the only ones who know this, but the majority of larger institutional investors will be fully aware of where the value was for Bitcoin, where the majority of people were actually accumulating and where the pain points are going to be. This means that Bitcoin's move down to this low level is going to basically wipe out all the gains that these individuals were basically seeing over the last few months. And this will be an area where some institutional investors may start soaking up that supply as these initial investors fear losing profit and going into negative. They may sell at neutral, assuming that prices will come down even lower. And if this is the case, then this is where we'll see a shift in who is holding the Bitcoin from the retail investor over to the institutional investor. And of course, there's some really savvy institutional investors that will look at this and say, well, I'm not paying this. I will pay cheaper. And therefore, there's a case, a bearish case for $25,000 Bitcoin um, because they'll believe that there's better value to be had outside of this range. It's a really interesting take on where the, where the value was <clears throat> and where the value potentially could be in the future. If I throw on the divergence indicator, there's nothing here to kind of be too alarming. 
all of that is okay. I'll take that off and throw on the volume profiles again. Volumes are really spiked up as prices pull back down. Um, most recently, there is an increase in volume profiles here uh, <clears throat> as we have now pulled back down a bit. So again, not necessarily giving us that that kind of bullish hope that we, you know, so many people seem to have. But ultimately, we are looking for a bit of a move to the downside. 30K seems to be the most obvious area, um, and so we'll keep a close eye on that. From our weekly time frame, our stochastic is slowly moving down. We've still got a long journey to go, though, in my opinion, and the monthly hasn't even moved yet. So we have a long journey ahead of getting BTC to kind of get back down into the range. As you can see, I've removed the fibs and made this a little bit clearer. You can see the $48,000 to $52,000 range that we were talking about a couple of weeks ago is where we got rejected from um, and we are looking at now coming down towards these other areas on the chart but for the most part that is going to cover today's video so why not check out this video right here where i give you a little bit more insight into my thoughts and opinions on what is going on with btc